Okay, this video is meant to help you out with the word problems in the 5B unit. Okay, this first problem is one that we've seen in the notes before. It's talking about sound intensity. So some things we need to highlight in the problem are our equation and the fact that I0 is equal to 10 to the negative 12. So we're going to plug 10 to the negative 12 in for I0 each time. We're going to find the decibel level of sound made by busy traffic streets, and it gives us I is 10 to the negative 5. So we have L of I equals 10 log, and for I we're plugging in 10 to the negative 5, and for I naught we have 10 to the negative 12. So now, since what we're really solving for is on its own side of the equal sign, we can just put this whole thing in our calculator, exactly like you see it, and you should get the correct answer. This is the exact same process for problems B and C. Okay, this is also another problem that we've seen in our notes before. We're talking about the acidity of a substance. So we're trying to find the pH of each substance. Here's my equation. So for part A, it says a lemon with hydronium ion concentration of 2.86 times 10 to the negative fourth. So if you look back up at the problem, we know that that is just our variable H. Again, this problem, you just plug it in your calculator and you'll get the correct answer. Same with parts B and C. Okay, so now we're going to do some investing, and this says to compound quarterly, so we need to use our equation. Okay, so first of all, we need to write an equation given the money Y after, ten, after T years. So we're going to leave Y and T in the equation. P is our starting amount, so we started with $10,000. 1 plus R. Make sure you change your rate to a decimal, so it should be 0 0.05. Our N is how often we compound, and it says that we compound quarterly at the beginning of the problem. So N is going to be 4. And then we have N times T. So anytime you write an equation, you leave it as Y and T. Part B says, when will you have $20,000? So the word when tells me that I'm going to be solving for T. So plug 20,000 in for Y. Okay, so the first thing I want to do when solving this kind of an equation I was, is I want to get rid of the one, or the, sorry, the 10,000. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10,000. I get 2 equals... And I can go ahead and figure out what 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 is, and that would be 1.0125. Now I have an exponential form. I'm going to change this to log form in order to solve it. So I have log base 1.0125 of 2 equals 4t. Now we can solve this using change of base formula. And then whatever you get, make sure you divide by 4, and you'll have your answer for T. Part C is the same way. Okay, now we're going to talk about half-life of medicine. So the half-life of a medication is the amount of time for half of the drug to be eliminated from the body. The half-life of Advil, or ibuprofen, is represented by that equation. R is the amount of Advil remaining in the body. M is the initial dosage and T is the time in hours. Those are going to be important things to look back at. So we start off with a 200 milligram dosage of Advil is taken at 1 o'clock. How many milligrams remains in the body at 6 p.m.? So I'm saying how many milligrams remain? Look back up at your equation and we'll notice that R means how many milligrams remain. So I'm solving for R here. M is my initial dosage of 200. And T for time um, looks like five hours have elapsed after, from one to six. So we have five over two. 
Since r is already alone on its own side of the equal sign, this is another problem that you can just pick up your calculator and plug in to get the correct answer. Same thing for parts b and c. Okay, for problem number five, it says the length of a scalloped hammerhead shark can be measured by that function. Where t is the age in years, how old is the shark at 7.5 centimeters long? So it's saying how old, that means we're going to be solving for t. So plug 175 in for the length, l. So in order to solve this exponential equation, we first need to get rid of the 266 and then get rid of the negative 219. So to move the 266 over, we're going to subtract. We get negative 91 equals negative 219e to the negative 0 0.05. Okay, so now to get rid of the negative 219, we're going to have to divide both sides by two negative 219. And I'm going to round this answer to 0 0.416. Okay, now we have our base alone, e to the exponent. We can change this to log form. It's going to be log base e, and we know that log base e is just ln of 0. 416 equals your exponent. So now you can put in your calculator ln of 0 0.416. Make sure that you divide this over and you will have your correct answer. Okay, for this last problem, you're either going to be using the equation or the equation pert. So you'll need to know when to use which. I'll do the first problem with you. So annual, we're going to use the equation that compounds periodically. That's the one with the r over n. So we have an initial deposit of $100. We have 6% interest. How long will it take for the balance to reach 1,000? So you're going to do that for each of these different compounding periods. So it's saying how long will it take. We're going to be solving for t. So I want to know whenever I have $1,000. Plug that in for y. Compounding annually means that n is 1. And it would be n times t, but I'm just going to put t because 1 times t is t. So I'm going to start by dividing away the 100. And I went ahead and put that in my calculator. I got 1.06. OK, so now I have my 1.06 to the t. I can change to log form now. Now I can just use change of base and I will get my answer. And you can do that for parts B, C, and D as well.